Uh, you know, yesterday in your budget speech, you were very appreciative of, you know, income tax payers. You, in fact, the number of income tax, uh, you know, people paying income tax has gone up. Collections are up 2.4 times. Uh, you, were, you were quite appreciative. In fact, I, I thought you just stopped short of sort of giving them something back because, you know, it was a vote on account. Uh, my question is that, you know, salaried people are paying 30% today, whereas corporates pay 22% tax. In the longer term, directionally... Corporates meaning as an entity, yes, a company. Yes, en that's right. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying in the longer term, directionally, do you think this would you would align this in some way or the other? I'm, I'm talking about the longer term. Well, the would direct taxation reforms are a steady job in the pipeline. And some results come out and more work is happening. So direct taxation is something on which we... One, ease of uh, the taxpayers... Uh, facilitation which has to be improved and also one of the things happened yesterday one of yes. the uh, serving the customer better business That's in the taxation regime happened yesterday but more work can always be done yes so so, so salary can be more hopeful in the coming days in your July budget I'm not budget. saying anything now <laughs> no no I know that I'm indirectionally over the long term uh, you managed inflation very well in the past few years you know uh, what about food inflation you know, that's really pinching the common man. Pulses are up 20%, vegetables 27%. Any plan to sort of rein in food inflation? See, food inflation cannot be spoken as one basket yes. uh, or one item. It, it has so many different components. If pulses are becoming more expensive, we are import dependent to meet adequacy in uh, meeting their demand. In the sense, we are not self-sufficient. We need to import to meet our demand. And when you depend on imports, the prices are determined by the supplier, not by us. So when it is uh, pulse or dal, where the prices have to be controlled, so much has to be done well in advance. If you know your crop is only X and not uh, what you need, then you pre-plan imports. You have to uh, touch on very many countries to get the imports and so on. Uh, and in that, of course, the role of the traders is very important. Yes. Uh, that is one thing. Second is you're looking at other seasonable, seasonal vegetables, which can equally be affected by drought or by excess rain. That's true. No import substitution or no import in the last minute can help us. If suddenly one particular crop, say of potatoes or onions or tomatoes, are lost, the last minute, pro pro last minute procurement from somewhere else is also fraught with difficulties. That's good. So uh, the treatment for controlling price for pulses and uh, the perishable crops and let's say rice which can be stored are all very different. And that is why there is a committee in Government of India which looks into this and makes sure that periodically you are able to get uh, in time those based on estimates. It's an ongoing job. It's not with a deadline. It has to keep happening. Yes. And I think largely the committee has been successful. Otherwise, we couldn't have been closer to the policy range. That's right. You know, uh, I had interviewed the Prime Minister in 2016, as early as that, and he spoke about the white paper. He said that we should come out with the white paper uh, because we inherited an economy which was in the fragile five. And you know what we and that was early, you know, just two years into the government. And what we've been, what we had to really do to drag it out of, uh, you know, uh, the levels it had reached. Uh, you spoke similarly yesterday about a white paper, and you said it was a Herculean task to bring the economy back from the brink. What is the idea behind the white paper? Why now? And will it be another stick to beat the opposition with? See, you're right in pointing out that the Honorable Prime Minister has spoken about it even in 2016 in your interview. Then it was so many different sections of our society themselves suggested to us that you better bring a paper out, white paper out, to say why Indian economy has reached the fragile five, to say why our banks had become such a black hole, nothing could be restored of the banks. Uh, banks were all in deep trouble. Look at the number of NPAs and the value of the NPAs, meaning what was the original value and to what extent they had reached uh, almost close to valueless positions. 
So whether it was your banks, whether it was the overall economy, whether it was defense procurement, whether it was a vital sector of telecom, why? Even minerals, yes. every area was ridden with problems. Now if you're talking of corruption, well it's one thing, it goes to the court, people get punished and then the monies are given back or not given back, values are retrieved or not retrieved, that's one side of the story. But what impact it left on the economy? To restore your banks back to health, to make sure your country is safe with adequate strategic equipment given to defense personnel, to make sure that your mines which are wealth under the earth, meaning inside the earth under the soil, to use them for the benefit of the country rather than to use them as one instrument through which you line your own pocket. What implications it had on the economy? Banks not being healthy, mines being given to brothers and sisters who did not want to extract the mineral for the benefit of the country. Spectrum allocations, if it had happened in time, I didn't have to spend so much to restore BSNL to have 2G or 4G in time. And what implication does it have on the country when 4G is not available in time, whether, whereas the whole world is talking about 5G? Yes. So the kind of impact that it had, the mismanagement, it is not just talking about you know, policy paralysis for a fragile five. It's talking about every one of these steps, which one in morally, um, which number one morally was immoral, in the sense was not right, and equally the kind of positive effect if it had happened pro very well in a transparent fashion, it would have had on the economy. We lost 10 glorious years and to restore it to that position back and then to pull it up to now get closer to the world's third largest economy is a Herculean task which I'm grateful this country had a Prime Minister like Modi ji who single-mindedly said I will restore this economy back, it's my service to the nation. Yes. Otherwise it wouldn't have happened. So why the white paper now? Yes. We've had 10 years and prior to that there was a 10 years where you saw all this happening. Policy paralysis, corruption, nation losing its endowments and so on. 10 years under Prime Minister Modi. What kind of course corrections had to happen? What kind of restoring confidence has to, had to happen? What kind of pulling back from rut that had to happen? And equally making sure you're purchasing the equipments, you're removing BSNL from distress, you're making sure BSNL employees are given their due, you're making sure the country gets 5G, not just 4G. Look at the coverage India has in 5G today. I agree. All this and to make sure that the investor confidence is not just intact but is growing that within a matter of eight years I would say we've reached 596 billion US dollars as our foreign exchange reserve. Just compare that with the last 10 years. At least for the sake of the elected honorable representatives who are sitting in the parliament, they should know what was it then what effort it took to restore it here and what we should not therefore ever imagine or dream of doing in personal interest forgetting the nation. Why now? Parliament should know. Two, at that time had Prime Minister Modi not taken the call that in the interest of our nation I would not bring it out. He didn't bring the paper then, white paper then because you put the nation first. You say, if I do it now, ha, I can be happy, but the confidence in our country would have been lost. Investors wouldn't have come. Our own people would have lost faith in the systems. They would say, oh my God, this government will come, eat away and go. That next government can come. It will do its own, but we are all languishing. The faith in institutions, in government, in leaders, in politics would have been lost in the minds of people. And I am so grateful that the Prime Minister didn't do it then. He restored it all, put India on such a wonderful track towards becoming third largest economy and then 
so that all of us know what it took and what we shouldn't do in the future. This paper. So when do you table it? Well, soon. No,